There's a growing consumer demand with um, plant-based cheeses, specifically hard types like cheddar and Parmesan. So here's our approach to um, as a plant-based alternative. So as for the desired characteristics uh, of our product, uh, nutritionally, you know, hard cheeses are rich in fat, protein and minerals, uh, specifically calcium, phosphorus, and sodium. Um, and due to a long duration of ripening, uh, typically hard cheeses have a lower water content compared to softer cheeses. Uh, they develop a very strong and potent taste and aroma. And typically they can be crumbly, dry, and which, which therefore makes them easy to uh, grate. Um, as you can see in our table, um, uh, for moisture content, uh, you know, it's, it varies between roughly 35 and 42% with an average of 39% moisture. And as for all the other values, uh, they, they range over, um, excuse me, um, you know, a standard deviation of about one to two. So depending on the type of cheese, you know, all these values may vary. For the ingredient profile, uh, we had sustainability and cost effectiveness in mind as um, also with a clean label. So the primary milk substitute uh, that we have decided on is a nut and legume milk blend consisting of cashews, almond, and adjusted with pea protein isolate. And uh, this is because the, uh, this combination of plants uh, have a similar uh, characteristic to dairy milk and post-processing, once it turns into cheese, will have uh, similar characteristics like the ones described previously uh, for the cheese. And uh, rennet traditionally used in cheese making is derived from the cow intestine so we opted for acetic acid as a plant-based acidulant, and this is quite label friendly as it's the white, um, it is the main ingredient in white vinegar. And we also included salt and annatto extract for flavor and color. And importantly, lactobacilli bacteria for, uh, to start the culture of the, process, uh, of the food to allow for the cheese making process to happen. And for wax coated cheeses, Carnauba wax is a plant derived uh, wax from palm trees. And this is a uh, substitute for beeswax, which is traditionally used in some hard cheese making. And for the manufacturing process, uh, we first start with the preparing the milk. So it was basically the balance of the protein and the fat ratio. And at this process, we had to cool down to 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit to make the, the milk to prepare for the making it before we start making it to the cheese. Second step is to add them by the milk. We added the cultures to the milk, allows to begin the ferment and makes it more acidic. The third is the curling the milk, which is the adding the rennet. But for this plant-based cheese, we will replace that rennet to the acetic acid, and then it will inactivate the protein kappa casein to turning into Paracapagasin, which will make the reaction that cuddles the milks and creating the curds. For the next step is the cutting the curds, which the cheese maker will cut the curds with the knives and heat it up, further separating the curds and the whey. The fifth step is the processing the curd, which for this step is very, very important because it defines the property of the cheese. You can either make the cheese into more hard cheese or the soft cheese, depending on how you make it more stirring, the stirring times and the cooking also temperature. So this step is processing the curd through the stirring, cooking and washing, continue to acidify and dry the curds. And to finalize it, the drain the whey. So next to it is dried and then leaving only a mat of cheese curds. And for finalizing the, on the application to the, the how the cheese that you want, it either can be the cheddaring or the salt cheese or what kind of either a different kind of shape cheese and also the age in the cheese is included on this step. Um, yeah, so there are certain functional and sensory properties of plant-based cheddar cheese that are affected by its physiochemical properties. So our cheese should be assessed with its dairy counterparts on the basis of its appearance, color, odor, mouthfeel, flavor, and aftertaste. 
So our cheese would have a relatively low uh, moisture content and high storage moduli. So this is important <clears throat> when we look at the shareability of cheese because we don't want it to become too dry and gummy and shatter into uh, small pieces during the shredding process. Um, its viscoelastic properties should be such that the cheese melts upon heating and undergoes the viscous flow upon further heating. So the hydrophobic interactions would strengthen and the, as the temperature is increased, we should contract the protein molecule and leads to the formation of a weaker gel structure. Um, the hardness of our cheese is an important property for cheddar. So this is achieved as a result of the proteolysis between the released functional groups which bind more water. And the low water to protein ratio would cause a um, formation of a rigid structure. The pH of our cheese would also play an important role in determining the texture as it alters the protein-protein interactions and calcium solubility. Having a pH away from the isoelectric point of the protein would be in our interest. And um, talking about sensory qualities such as appearance, color, and an aftertaste, there is research that as consumers want a cheese like hard and a pale yellow and a salty aftertaste in the plant based cheese. So, we would use ingredients like a natto extract and a vegan lactic acid and stuff to produce the desired sharpness and color of the cheddar cheese. And last but not least, the aroma is a very important indication of consumer acceptability. So, we would have to study um, the degradation of lipid, protein, and carbohydrate molecules, which would also produce like compounds like ketones, alcohols, and aldehydes in a ripening phase, which would all influence the smell of our cheese. Thanks. The nutritional profile. So for the nutritional profile, I took a study of 245 non-dairy plant-based cheese alternatives. They were analyzed using the nutritional facts labels. The various cheese alternatives were based upon coconut oil, cashews, coconut blends, etc. And only 3% of these cheese had 5 grams or more of protein, while 19%, 14%, and 1% were fortified with calcium, vitamin B12, and vitamin D. The table displays the medians of the calories in each nutrient for each of the base types, and any significant differences among the base types are also reported. And that is our concept of plant-based cheese. Thank you.